Hi guys, today we are off for our weekly film night. This week we are off to see Toy Story 4, hence the t-shirt, courtesy of Primark. I'm very excited, have my Mickey ears on as well. Alex doesn't look as excited as I am, but he definitely I'm is. I'm definitely very yeah. excited for this one. Kind of like one of our childhood films, as I'm sure definitely, it is for yeah. most of you guys as well. And as per, if you haven't seen the film yet, I'd probably say to skip this one, just because we don't yeah. want to accidentally give away any spoilers and ruin the film for you. Definitely especially not. being the last ever one that's going to be made. So. Well, I did hear a rumour about a fifth one, but again, it's a rumour. It's probably not going to yeah, happen. probably won't happen. <laughs> so, we will speak to you later. <laughs> just stopped off for food before we go to the cinema and do a little bit of shopping and we've been given one of their homemade lemonades uh, so we're gonna see what we think of that it's really nice it's not busy though yeah I was expecting it to be busy but it's strange because I feel like I'm doing some sort of alcoholic shop <laughs> and it's not <laughs> do you want to uh, try yours yeah let's get the bottoms up <laughs> It's actually really good. Do you like it? Yeah, I know what you mean though. Mm. Oh, it'd be fizzy. Yeah, it kind of throws you off because you expect it yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, so we have chosen to sit in the little outside section. Um, it is covered. It's um, really nice in here. But yeah, it's really nice. So we're going to choose what food we want. I am so hungry. <laughs> yeah, me too. So this is the starter we've gone for and it's just the standard sort of garlic bread and uh, you can see there we've like added on like the balsamic onions. It's got cheese inside as well. Yep, so you've got all cheese all melted inside of that. Look, Look at that. that. Look at that for a cheese pull. Go on. It's so good. We used to come to Ask Italian all the time and we always used to get this because Alex's favourite. And I've missed this. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna have to have some of this now. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I want a bit of like loads of the onions on there. Yeah, you gotta get a little bit then. Going for a big bite, really big bite. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it good? Is it as good as you remember? Mm. I feel like because they didn't used to like fold it over like this, mm. like, and it used to be open, so I think when it's folded over. Like you can taste the cheese like so much more. I don't know if they put more in it. They might do. But it's look. more like a, a pie. Look oh. at that. And we love cheese. Right. Right, we're gonna eat this. Yeah. See you in a minute. So our mains have just come out. As you can see, Alex got spaghetti carbonara. And I got a goat's cheese and tomato pizza. 
it was one of the light ones off of the menu it comes with this really funky looking salad i don't know what this is i did try a little bit and it kind of tastes like carrot and this looks like a yellow cucumber but i actually have no idea so if you know let me know i'm so hungry yeah i am <laughs> But I'm patiently waiting for you. <laughs> Let's have a, a little mouthful. Mm. What's the verdict? That's yeah, so good. Have they been very generous with the bacon? Uh, do you know what, today I think they have to be honest. Nice, nice. Um, it's not as thick as it usually is. Um, I think I would have liked the sauce to be a little bit thicker than what it is, but it's still really nice. Lovely. I'll let you have that mouthful and then it's going to be my go. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, not quite Lady and the Tramp moment there. Very nice. So I'm going to have to just kind of try and cut a bit. Really know how to attack it. Two hours later. So. Um, that was a big bite. Mm. I've just got a mouthful of goat's cheese. Absolutely beautiful. It's so creamy and it doesn't really melt, which is strange, but it is really good. And with the rocket and the tomato as well, it just makes it makes it perfect. And we'll have another bite. And so we're just gonna finish these quick and then we're gonna head off to do some shopping. Yeah. Seeing Toy Story. <laughs> Toy Story! Hey guys, so it's the day after seeing Toy Story 4. And overall, we thought it was an absolutely amazing film. Uh, it's an absolute roller coaster of emotions. Um, we've never seen the cinema so packed either. No, it not was at all. so full. Not a single seat left, I don't think. I think I only remember it ever being that busy when I was a kid. Yeah, same like, here, I think. Yeah, and no. most of the people sort of middle age, like. There weren't actually many yeah. kids in there, surprisingly. There was this uh, like older man who was sat in the seat next to me and he'd come on his own and he was chuckling away. Absolutely. He was very it. funny, yeah. Yeah. As Alex has mentioned, it was a very emotional film. Yeah. Um, I cried a lot. Happy tears, sad tears. I cried throughout numerous times. It's such a mixture of emotions that happen at the same time. And I think where it's been like 10 years since the last one, it just hits you even more and I think the biggest thing for me that was really hard for my emotions to cope with was the fact that Woody seems to no longer be the leader in the sort of crew in the in the, the group of toys that they have like so obviously they're now all with Bonnie and if you remember Dolly from Toy Story 3 she has now pretty much become the room leader and you can tell from the first few scenes that Woody is really really struggling yeah, with this definitely. like he keeps slipping up and yeah, like there's trying... moments where he sort of takes charge by accident yeah and, and then she sort of has to off. like yeah put him back in his place almost <laughs> yeah and for me that's just really sad Woody has always been like the number one main yeah. guy who sort of everyone listens to and everyone goes to for advice and the, the new group of toys that Bonnie has which Andy's toys have joined all listen to, to Dolly and that's just really yeah. strange. So just to give you guys a sort of brief overview of what does happen in the film, uh, it basically starts out as Bonnie goes to nursery and makes herself a new toy. Yeah. Um, we we'll talk about him in just a moment and um, when they get back they all go on a road trip like all the toys and whatnot um, They go away in the RV um, And on the way the new toy jumps out the window um, And Woody being Woody takes it upon himself and jumps out with him yeah, um, To bring him back to Bonnie and then along their journey they find Bo's lamp in a vintage shop uh, They see it in the window on the way and so they decide to go in and try and find her 
and that's where a new character is introduced. Um, we'll talk about her in a minute, but it's quite a dark scene, and Definitely. she's she's like the villain kind of in yeah, the film. Yeah, it's almost darker than the Lotso storyline yeah, um, in Toy Story Three. Ends up being Woody has to get Forky back and save him, basically, yeah. um, bring him back to the RV before the, everyone leaves. So, as Alex just mentioned, the character is Forky. So, if Unless you've been living under a rock for the last few months, I'm sure you have seen this character yeah. around. So he is actually made by Bonnie in nursery um, and he is made out of trash. He comes out of the bin, so Woody goes to, Woody goes to the bin, takes out a load of rubbish and chucks it on Bonnie's desk because she's sat all alone and she's feeling really sad. So she creates Forky and little does she know, obviously he becomes a toy like Woody and everyone um, but he is convinced that he is just trash so all he tries to do for like the first like quarter of the film is jump into a bin and Woody has to try and stop him from doing that which is it's so iconic it's so funny it's such a weird concept for them to have come up with but it works yeah. so well so Woody then spends his time trying to convince Forky that he is a toy and not just rubbish I think um, over the, like, the first night as well is constantly like putting him back up with Bonnie in the bed. Yeah, because he keeps and, running yeah, away trying and every to jump time, out. And then he wakes going, up in the yeah. morning, he's like asleep in the bin with like a bit of rubbish on him. Sort yeah, of, like his a duvet. bit of paper over as a duvet, yeah, which was a really, really, really funny, lovely yeah. little, lovely little thing that they did there. And I think one of the other funny things is, is where he was trash and he literally has no idea what's going on most of the time. Um, when they're searching to find Bo Peep, he's, he's running around the shop with Woody shouting, Bo, 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 yeah, but yeah. you can tell he has no clue what he's talking <laughs> yeah. about. To him Brilliant it's just like scene. a, almost just a random word. Yeah, he's he just does not about know what it means at all. Yeah, so simple, but it's just so funny. Had everyone yeah. in the cinema laughing. Definitely, yeah. And so going back to the vintage shop where they see Bo's lamp, the new character that gets introduced is Gabby Gabby. She's basically a defect, like little doll. And it's a very dark scene when she gets introduced. She acts as if she's gonna help Woody. Yeah, help him um, find Bo. Yeah, and as they're going about, she sort of questions him when he was made and then spots on his back the little pull string yeah. for his voice box. And her defect is hers doesn't work. And so she quickly goes from being so nice to being very evil and she's trying to take yeah. his voice box. Yeah. And obviously at first he doesn't know. It's quite a dark scene. Yeah, they, the way that they have portrayed it, where the vintage shop is, is very dark and dingy yeah. anyway, it makes it a lot scarier. And dolls are something that are portrayed as quite scary in a lot of horror films anyway, so. Yeah, I absolutely hate them. Yeah, like, I, I do like not them. like dolls I in films at all. I like bodyguards, I'd probably say. Yeah. They're like ventriloquist dolls. Um, they do not talk, like. They'll no. ju they just stare and their mouth just does the moving up and down as they do. Yeah, it, it's really creepy. Yeah. Um, um, and the way that they walk as well, because their limbs are all floppy. Yeah. And so they'll be pushing her pram, but like, I don't know, it's just... Yeah, it's a very it's creepy. creepy way they've done yeah. it, but it's so clever. Yeah. I'd imagine it'd probably scare quite a few kids. Yeah, well, I think so. I think if I watched that when I was younger, it definitely yeah, would have. So there are some other characters which you meet um, along the way in the vintage shop. The main one for me was Duke Kaboom. So he's yeah. voiced by Keanu Reeves, which I know everybody was raving about. So he ends up helping with the mission. He's a little um, sort of, he's a little toy stuntman on a motorbike. Um, and he ends up being one of the main things that help them do what they need to yeah. do in the film. He is also broken. It's quite a sad story, really. The kid that he had when he was younger basically played with him for like the first like 20 minutes of Christmas and then never played with him again because the advert that showed Duke Kaboom showed him working in a much better way than the toy actually did. So yeah, he's another one of like sort of the unwanted lost toys, which is a big concept in this whole film. Mm. Yeah, so with like the lost toys, they're not just in the shop either. No. Um, they're also, they go to a play park, which is where actually Woody meets Bo again. Mm. And it's basically every day when the kids go there to play, all the toys sort of jump in the sand pit. Get really and excited. Sort of, yeah, they get really excited because their dream is to have a kid again. I think most of them are toys that have had kids in the past and they've kind of obviously grown up and been got rid of them, been them, whatever. Left yeah. Apart, like, yeah, yeah. And so they're all there sort of fighting to get another kid. It's a really nice concept. So the next characters I kind of want to talk about, they're not necessarily 
a lost toy. They're new toys. So near the RV park that they go on their on their trip away, um, there's a carnival on. Um, so when Buzz leaves to find Woody, who's gone after Forky, he ends up getting stuck in a fairground game because somebody finds him on the floor and attaches him up as one of the prizes to be won. Um, so he ends up being tied up next to Bunny and Ducky, which are in the trailer. And I'm sure you know who I'm on about, the little fluffy characters and they had me in stitches yeah. the duck is so sassy yeah. and that was just something that completely made it for me he was a brilliant character um but yeah where they're new toys they're not necessarily lost but they are still desperate for a kid when um when the kids are trying to win and they're trying to win Buzz, they're sort of getting really jealous because yeah. they want to be... And he's, I think he's kind of like taken their spot. It's like the best spot like yeah, on the wall of yeah, prizes, like I guess. Yeah, like the best prize. So they are a little bit jealous at first, but they do become very good friends in the end. Uh, another funny part of the film is as Buzz is trying to get Woody back, he uses what his inner voice. Yeah. And basically what he does is just hits his command buttons mm -hmm. and is using that as his conscience to tell yeah. him what to do. Kind of something that was suggested by Woody, I think, when yeah. he was asking him how he always makes decisions and knows what to do. Yeah, and he referred to it as his inner voice. Yeah. And obviously to Buzz, his inner voice is his commands. Um, so it's quite funny because it does take him in the right way as well throughout yeah, Most weirdly it. it does when he doesn't have that many, but like yeah. there'll be like one bit and he it doesn't give him the answer that he wants, so yeah. he'll press it like another three times, but it will still come out with the same outcome. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to like the sort of sadness of the film again, Woody really wants Forky to be there for Bonnie, just like he was for Andy, and be his main toy, like be her main toy like he was for Andy. So he kind of takes it upon himself for it to be his last mission before he feels like he can finally just sort of give up and be a lost toy, go off with Bo Peep and all of the other people that he's met along the way because Andy has grown up, he's not Bonnie's favourite toy anymore and he just wants to go and have fun. Which is a massive thing for him because he was so set on being yeah. somebody's toy and being there for them. It's kind of a massive turn, he's, it's almost like he's grown up. Yeah, it's it's quite yeah. it's very emotional. So the whole ending in itself is quite heartbreaking for me. I was absolutely bawling yeah. my eyes out with happiness and with sadness. Like towards the end of the film as well, I just heard her like sniff into herself. <laughs> I just looked over and she's there wiping her yeah. eyes. Like probably I not just, the only one uh, in there. No, I don't think I would have been the only one no. in there. There was a lot of people really that seemed sad. to be Disney fanatics like me. They were all wearing Disney clothes too. I had my ears on in the cinema. It was just such a sad but happy ending. Woody finally gets back with Bo and we've seen throughout all of the films that there's been this weird little connection between them but they've never really sort of hit it off and they finally get their little like romance going which is so lovely and for their romance to sort of happen um, the good boys that need to, to happen to make it possible are just so sad like it's literally something that I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to give it all away but yeah it's very sad and there are some really goodbye, sad, yeah. goodbyes that are made and yeah. I just it was too much for me to cope with it really was so one other thing is some of the characters weren't sort of as prominent in the film as they were yeah. in others um, so like Jesse and the aliens, but they are still in it enough to be sort of remembered and you yeah. know they were there. Yeah. And it's quite good right at the end as well because a scene that happens right at the start with mm -hmm. Forky and Woody mm -hmm. is copied like almost identical with Jesse and Forky's new friend that yeah. Bonnie also makes in class. Yeah, but you do only get to see this for like literally a minute at the end yeah. of the film. So it's not like a new character which you get to learn a lot about, but it's such a nice little thing that they've slipped yeah. in there. Um, and it kind of brings the film full circle and links it up. It's just, it's lovely. It's it really a really is. nice ending, yeah. Yeah. And the only other thing I think I wanted to mention, is obviously we've come so far with animation um, these days. Yeah. Like, and if you think back to when the first one came out, that was so, so long ago now. Like, I wasn't even born, neither were you. No. Uh, that's mad. Um, so you, at the start of every film, obviously it's a Disney Pixar film, so you have the Pixar sign with the bouncing light and everything. And the way that they transform that into the 
beginning scene of the film is through um, having some rain but the rain I, it's, I don't know how to explain it but it is such an amazing piece of yeah, animation really and I yeah. generally thought the rain was real like it just looked so realistic it's it's just mad it was unbelievable and it's just little details like how amazing their hair looks like it looks yeah. so real and there's like cobwebs in the corners of the vintage shops and little things like that that must have taken them so long yeah. to add in but it just makes it feel so much more real everything's just so defined and like yeah. the textures on all their like clothing and everything it, it's so much to get your head around that technology can do that now it's amazing and i think the only other thing that we mentioned which isn't really like an, an animation thing it's more just a little slipped in thing that disney like to do throughout their films um, so we did notice that one of the characters in the nursery scene, I believe, and I think she yeah. appears at the at carnival, the carnival, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, is a little girl who looks suspiciously like Boo from Monsters Inc. Um, and there's also a bit where you can see the grape soda badge from up. I kept sort of grabbing hold of Alex and being like, oh my god, like, look, look, look at what it is. Literally, but I had already spotted myself, yeah. so I was Which quite proud. Which I'm proud of him for. Yeah. But yeah, I just really like how they tie all of their films in together. It's a really sweet little thing that they do. So overall, uh, we 100% recommend you go and see it. Um, I don't think we would have ruined too much of the film. Like, I hope we haven't. There was no. so much we wanted to say, but yeah. we really We just... haven't gone into detail with no. sort of any of it. There's so much to every single scene. Yeah. And I don't think it was as good as the first one. But as with every film again, it so just difficult. never is. Yeah. Now it's kind of just an extension of the story. We know them all yeah. so well. It's kind of just, let's have a look at them on another yeah. adventure. But it was an amazing sequel. I yeah, can't definitely. wait to go back to Florida and go to Toy Story yeah. Land. Um, especially now they're probably going to have stuff sort of related to the new film and the new Hopefully, characters. Yeah. But take your tissues, be prepared. If you're an emotional person like I am and you get very attached, take some tissues with you because you will cry. And so we do hope you've enjoyed this video. Video. and let us know if you have seen Toy Story 4 if mm -hmm. you're planning to let us know when you're going yeah um, and we will see you in the next video don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe yeah and he referred to it as his inner voice yeah. and obviously to bus and I'll <laughs> <laughs> stop no bus, <laughs> bus. <laughs> and obviously oh my god oh my god <laughs>